Hi, this is Daniel DeTuro. A viewer asked why my cooking videos do not include the glycemic index, a number that gives people an idea how fast their body converts carbohydrates in a food into blood glucose to help prevent glucose spikes. It helps people with diabetes or pre-diabetes to control their blood glucose. While a one cup serving of this lentil soup has 30 grams of carbohydrates, about half of the carbohydrates is indigestible fiber, leaving four grams of sugar to be converted into glucose. This salad, which appears to be high in carbohydrates, has about 13 grams of carbohydrates, eight grams of which is fiber, and about five grams of sugar. On the other hand, just 80 grams of this cake has 38 grams of carbohydrates, only one gram of fiber, and 28 grams of sugar. This chicken and vegetable stir fry can be served with or without rice. The type of rice you choose affects the glycemic index. Here are four types of white rice readily available in the United States. Arborio, sushi, jasmine, and parboiled, also known as converted rice. Arborio rice is typically used for Italian risottos. It's a short grain rice like sushi or sticky rice. While its glycemic index is significantly lower than sushi rice, its glycemic load, which we'll discuss later, is about the same. You can significantly lower both the glycemic index and glycemic load of white rice by eating long grain jasmine or converted rice. To complicate matters, the glycemic index is a numerical value assigned to a specific food, indicating how slowly or how quickly that food will increase your blood glucose level. Glycemic index values are available for many raw, cooked, and prepared carbohydrate-rich foods. Foods with little or no carbohydrates like fats and high-protein meats are not assigned a glycemic index value. You can assume their glycemic index is zero compared to glucose that has a glycemic index of 100. The glycemic index was developed in the early 1980s to determine which foods were best for people with diabetes who needed to control their blood glucose. Subjects fasted for 12 hours and were then given a food with a controlled amount of carbohydrate. Their blood sugar level is measured to determine how quickly the glucose in the food was released into their blood compared to a controlled amount of glucose. Glycemic index values apply to one specific food like raw potato, potato chips, or fried potatoes. When you combine high glycemic index white potatoes with other carbohydrates or protein, you can significantly change the food's glycemic index. You can use glycemic index values as a guide to select foods that reduce or prevent blood glucose spikes. An English muffin made from refined white flour has a glycemic index of 77 and a glycemic load of 11. An English muffin made from whole wheat flour has a glycemic index of about 45 and glycemic load of 4. Adding orange marmalade to a whole wheat English muffin doesn't significantly change the glycemic index or glycemic load since they are about the same. Adding high fat and high protein foods to a high glycemic index English muffin reduces its glycemic index and glycemic load. I can't tell you by how much because there are too many variables and no test data. Even among a particular type of food, the glycemic index can vary considerably. 120 grams of raw apple, about four ounces, has a glycemic index between 28 and 44. Sweet apples have a higher glycemic index than tart apples. Ripe fruits have a higher glycemic index than unripened fruits. For accuracy, you must know the food's correct glycemic index value. Glycemic index values apply to a specific carbohydrate-rich food eaten alone. Combining foods changes its GI value. It can be higher or lower depending on the type of food. Glycemic index and load values and glycemic load per day are categorized as low, medium, and high. 
Eating foods with low and medium GI and GL values makes it easier to control your blood glucose. Except white potatoes and dried fruits like raisins and dates, long grain rice, legumes and milk are also low GI foods. Among medium GI foods is sugar. This may come as a surprise, but you must keep in mind that it's measured against pure glucose and sugar, sucrose, is 50% glucose and 50% fructose. High GI foods includes foods that should be eaten in moderation. Instant oatmeal is on this list, not because of the oats, but because of the added sugar in most instant oatmeal. I've mentioned glycemic load throughout this video. Glycemic load doesn't get as much attention as the glycemic index. Glycemic load tries to estimate the carbohydrate consumption impact based on the glycemic index and the amount of carbohydrate in the food. Anyone can calculate a food's glycemic load when you know the glycemic index and the amount of carbohydrate in grams. For example, 120 grams of watermelon has a glycemic index between 72 and 80. Although watermelon has a high glycemic index, it only has 6 grams of carbohydrates. Watermelon is essentially water, so its glycemic load is 4.8. Although watermelon has a high glycemic index, it has a low glycemic load. Americans are told to pass on pasta but spaghetti bolognese has a lower glycemic index than watermelon. With 48 grams of carbohydrate, it has a glycemic load of 25, placing this food in the high glycemic load category. Does that mean you should completely ban pasta from your diet? For most people, the answer is no. By reducing the portion size by 50%, you cut the glycemic load by 50%, placing it in the medium category. You can also add a low carbohydrate salad with an oil-based salad dressing to further reduce both the glycemic index and glycemic load. Daily glycemic load should be 80 or less. You can maintain your daily glycemic load even if you ate the full serving. When dining out, resist complimentary high carbohydrate breads that usually accompany a meal. In general, foods and beverages high in sugar, especially added sugar, and starchy foods have higher glycemic index values. Prepared foods tend to have higher glycemic index values than natural foods like minimally processed fruits and vegetables. There are no known methods to calculate a food or meal's glycemic index. There are books and websites listing the glycemic index for hundreds of foods. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching and healthy eating.